It's 11.18 on a Monday. Fusi has struck again. And uh, we are back to square one. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lost. Uh, we were supposed to post a video today. And our video was all about how Fusi's making this return in the G7 movement and uh, how he's killing it on Twitch and, like, you know, our thoughts about it and, and hoping that this was going to last and this was his moment, you know bouncing back but it, it looks like he got in himself into some trouble again and uh, he assaulted a girl at an airport and it's on live stream everyone can kind of look at it you know and uh, it's disturbing it's definitely disturbing to say the least i know uh Niels, my cousin Niels, would probably feel the same right and we really didn't know what to do we had this video it was supposed to release we never miss our videos every monday and friday check us out but uh yeah it uh <laughs> It just left us in, like in shock, but it was like something that we're kind of used to because we've seen his behavior. And Fusi has this like this thing about him where he like falls apart or he makes himself fall apart and then he rebuilds himself. And like it's kind of like a, a redundant theme, but like some might say like you know the the Hollywood and like this industry that we're in, it's all about relevancy. Granted, you're right, and he knows how to stay relevant, but like sometimes in the worst ways and it could be like self-destructive and it, it can harm other people now, you know, in, in this case. And for that girl, I'm sure it's traumatizing. You know, she explained that she was in her life and, you know, I feel like she was kind of taken advantage of. And like, it's weird for me to say that in a, in a sense where like, I feel like he just can't help himself with these sort of things. And like, sometimes I look at people and I'm just like, you're a victim of your own doing and you can't even help yourself, you know? So it's like, it's sad. It's sad. But, you know, you, I think of the, the people that, you know, are a victim to this too. And it's like, that's who we should worry more about. So it's like, how many chances can you give someone and at the end of the day? Like, no matter what, no matter how many times someone messes up, I just have something in me that just like wants them to do better. And I hope he does better. But like, I don't know, man. I'm lost. We're all here. We're, we're lost. And we have this video and we have to kind of release it. But it's like it shows you how quick things can turn, you know, and like how quick you could be on top of the world and come falling right down if you haven't changed some of your bad habits and your ways of thinking and stuff. But I mean, I guess God knows best and I hope everyone involved are OK. But I love you all very much. I know Niels does too. Um, and we'll see you soon. Huh? What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? Man, Fousey Tube. Fousey Mother Fudgin. Too, bro. This guy, Honestly, man. you know, like this is a uh, one of the best news that I've heard in recent times, right? Because like we have talked about Fusi Tube in the past, and like for some weird, I have like affinity towards this guy because like he grew up in my same hometown, right? And he did something that not a lot of people can achieve and make it one be one of the biggest YouTubers in the game. And like he's Middle Eastern, he's Muslim, right? Like we relate to him on that level and stuff. And it's like I genuinely always wanted him to excel. You know, because a lot of people like try to punch you down prey when you're on down. Your downfall. Yeah, they prey on your downfall, especially when you're at the highest of heights. So now Fusi Tube is becoming one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. He's getting deals from people reaching out to him from Kick, from all these people. Aiden Ross contacting him, Jake Paul contacting him, Nadia with him all the time, which is another big streamer. But like, I'm so happy to see he's making another resurgence because he's in this cycle though. Like he'll go and have this super high high and then you'll have this really low low and then he'll come back up and then he'll come back down. Bless you by the way. Thank you. But like for whatever reason, and I also want to note that like in this space, right? It's all about relevancy. How relevant can you be? Are you talking about relevant things? Are you relevant in the media? Do people care? And your worth is your relevancy. And for whatever reason, whether it be good or bad, you know how they say bad publicity is good publicity? It's right. Like whatever attention you're getting is good. It's like 
He knows how to stay relevant in this space, bro. So it's like, I'm happy for him. I hope this is sustainable though. Like I hope this isn't one of those things where it's this roller coaster where he, again, he gets to the highest of heights and then he lets like his addictions, which he has overcome, get the best of him or, you know, his vices, right? Because we're all subject to our own vices, our own demons. And it looks like he's done the, you know, the proper healing to get him back to the spot. And I remember he recently went on um, a phone call with his mom and she was just like, hey, you know, guiding him. Right? And his brother. And his brother, right? Just guiding him. Don't do this. Don't go down this path and stuff. And it's like, you have to have strong people in your corner. And I hope these streamers and these people know that he's like vulnerable and susceptible to like having these high highs and low lows. So I hope he has good people in his, in his camp, so to speak. I feel like we have seen so much of Fuzi too. We're fans. Like I also, I think because I started watching him and way before YouTube was at the place is at today with the amount of influencer and content creation that we have. I watched him when he was doing all these like uh, prank videos and uh, Drake wannabe what Middle Eastern girls or guys say. And I like love that content. And I, that was like the first real page I followed that I was like, this is so entertaining. He, it's so relatable, all this stuff. And so I was really, really intrigued to see like his growth, but then you constantly saw the battle of him kind of taking the wrong direction are falling down. And then like, it's so interesting to see during those dark times, who's there for you, how they handle it, who leaves you, who comes back to you. Like we see this firsthand on like when you hit rock bottom, like support, how necessary it is, like the type of support, who it's coming from. Like it could be a, from a stranger, but it's like some sort of like cushion that helps that little, little increment just uplifts you in so many ways, let alone your family and friends, right? Like your mother of all people, your brother, all these things. I watched that TikTok of him on the phone with his brother saying, Fuzi, like you cannot do this again. I promise you, like I can't keep watching you do this. I won't speak to you again, like all these things. And like, you know, like you have the people around you and you see it, you're, you're hearing it, but you're so unaware of it and still disconnected from it and I think he's done a really good job at like going down the wrong path essentially again not maybe by choice sometimes life takes you there without even being aware of it and like when you are battling x amount of things in life like it does take over control but he does a good job at picking himself up kind of trying to and, and and being aware in a sense where like he'll vocalize it and then try to turn it around right and so to hear that he's doing well because you just told me earlier he was doing uber yeah. and i asked you i was like he's doing uber like we recently or i thought you were talking about like back in the day but i was like you're like yeah and i'm like i love to see just the resilience you know and i said this earlier in our previous podcast about this this na the nature of being resilient and how sometimes you need to just take action that may look different in so many ways in comparison to what you're used to and what you've achieved in the past but it's a necessary thing and it may mean you know taking multiple steps down but now to see him again like there's so much hatred amongst the community where you see people doing well and making a lot of money for some reason more positive than less positive than negative because people want that too or are they they feel others don't don't deserve it, right? Whatever you believe. Um, at the end of the day, for me, I just don't like to see people not doing well, like whatever that looks like. And it's not my place to make that judgment. Like you do what you do on your own. But it's like, you know, I'm happy that he's at a much better place. And to see it is uplifting. It is uplifting. Yeah. And like, you know, that's that J. Cole song, Pride is the Devil. It's like for him to come to a place where he was the top earner at YouTube, he was one of the biggest YouTubers in the game. He had this really, really high rise and it came crashing down because of his own vices, you know, and to his own detriment and to like really humble yourself and to like kill off that ego that a lot of us have. It's like, imagine being at the height of the world, cars, money, jewelry, girls, and then being like, you know what? Like I need to live a modest life, a sustainable life that will like, be a long-term give me long-term happiness but at the same time it like it's a to, like put that ego aside because like you're used to all the flashy you're used you, to the flashy that's all crowds. you know it becomes all you know at one point and the, the accessibility is so easy now like you have the funds and the the credentials to and like the contacts, same contacts. Mm -hmm, the network like and then that's the thing like it comes with a cost and people talk about this in the industry all the time about how like it's so dirty behind the scenes because you it does come with the cost of your soul and I think this is where I tend to get spiritual because sorry I didn't mean to cut you off but um there is this nature and balance of a faith that has always uplifted me in a way where it's like I am aware of what's important and what's not important and like fast money quick money easy money the nicer things luxury things are nice but it's like is it serving purpose to your life in, in, in a way where like at the end of the day do you go to sleep happy essentially so I've learned through growth that 
internally how I feel means more than just anything materialistic, but it is hard when it's all year around and you have access to it. You exactly. Know? And you know what scares me a little bit about the live stream thing? Like Fusi is doing the 24 hours live stream where he's sleeping on live stream. He's waking up he, using the bathroom on live stream. Like, how does that, so what is live streaming? How does live that streaming essentially is like this new thing that everybody's doing. Like is it on pipe. YouTube? It's on YouTube. Okay. It's on Twitch. But mainly people start off on Twitch. It's like the platform to live stream. And people do gaming. They do lifestyle. It's like basically you're... you're you have you a just camera watch. on you 24 7. Live. Live. And like, if there's no edits, there's no pre recorded stuff. It's so stuff. weird to me how people watch that. Like, they like to just see what people do all day, every day. Yeah, but like, it also is like, it could be tailored to a niche. Like, if you have a favorite game, you have like a favorite streamer, right? It's, just, it's streaming, and right? You just so, watch like, them play. You watch them play, go through the levels. Mm -hmm. Like, it's funny. And if you have a character, it's like, we're going to eventually have to live stream this. Yeah, no, right? I love blogging and like yeah. blogs, like, oh, but that's a all day edited. in the life. Yeah. But I can't imagine, like, I mean, live, I don't mind, but it's like, I, I see a lot of it. I'm like, people really just like to watch all that all day. Yeah. But it's like, again, like, same as vlogging. Vlogging is essentially live streaming, minus that yeah. you, it's not your call to go and be like, mm -hmm. Edit this edit. out. Oop, I got to get this out, right? It's yes. like, this is real life. Right. But then IRL is different, which is sort of what Fusi is doing. Like this in real time, in real life. Like, go with me to the grocery store. Like, no stopping. People are donating on this phone. $5, like $10. It's all about donations. That's how you oh, make money. Is that really? Yeah. So you have an audience of like 4,000, 5,000. Have you ever been on TikTok and people I are see gifting? that. What is that? That's that. They're gifting subs, gifting money. That's money. But people why? are gifting they're donating to their favorite streamers to keep up with their expenses to keep up it's a very lucrative thing and everybody's doing it right Interesting. because you're building a community and that community wants to support you right and like i don't know if to, how twitch pays you i know people have had their differences about like twitch payout how, being the biggest streamer like the kai sanats obviously aiden ross's they've always had issues about getting paid like uh, Kai Sinat basically got sent a pair of custom Air Force Ones and he's like, bro, I'm your biggest streamer on your platform. I'm bringing you guys millions of dollars and you send me some Air Forces. That's so interesting. So like your audience basically pays your bills and that can be upwards to $50,000, $60,000 wow. a month, $100,000 a month. Like, no way. you know, so you have a, a, a 5,000 people watching your live stream, 5,000, they're donating $5, $10, $20. You're going to be making thousands of dollars. Wow. So for him to be at a place where he had to accept the Uber role, being at the highest of highs of YouTube, humbling himself, and then getting another shot or opportunity at life shows me that he really is taking that like fall seven times, get up eight. Can like, we also can talk can we also talk about like rebuilding your reputation too? That is a big part of it too. It's like big how do you regain the trust and honesty of your audience that once saw you to be one person and then kinda change or I'm not saying that he essentially you know, did anything wrong to his audience. But I'm saying like in this industry, we see a lot of like shadow banning where it's like if one person falls off, that's it, they're done. And it's like, that's their reputation and that's all they know. No one will ever support them again. So it's like your, your true fans will remain your fans and see through the with you to recognize that you're, you've been through the ups and highs and lows of life and, and remain your fans, which I love to see. But then there are the people who are like, oh no, like there's no more credibility with him. So like, you know, to regain that is so impressive too. Remember in our last, we just talked about the timepiece gentleman, Anthony Fair, right? And we talked about like our differences and how people over without giving. You were like, you know, if, it's one thing to do it to yourself, but if you're messing over others, yeah. then it becomes like a really big issue. And with Fousey Tube, like he's, and what he's it, never it, had like scams. Yeah, it, he's never scammed people. Right. He's never done like shady money wise. Like he's just really kind of scammed himself in a sense where like he had vices that he just couldn't. And we know what addiction does to people, but it's also his honesty and transparency that separates him and why people are attuned to him. He went on H three H three and basically spilled the beans about his deepest, darkest demons. Yeah. Like. Uh, being addicted to going to massage parlors, go, having an addiction, being addicted. That's what his addiction, addiction was. And I don't mean, he's been very vocal about it. So it's even weird for me to just like kind of say that. But he's super vocal. But that honesty and transparency, like no, everybody has skeletons in their closet, whether it be big or small, right? There's something that you did to someone, whether it be, you know, talking behind their back or whatever yes. it could be. It could, the scale is endless endless right and nobody wants to say that because you don't want to feel judged and especially if you've gotten over that dark history or past yeah. it's like i want to just leave that yeah. never speak of it never you know and like i have stuff that i've dealt with where it's like if i someone over in a, in a relationship or i've done something you know whatever 
that I probably don't want resurfaced, especially to millions and millions of people across the world. So I feel like with him, honesty is the best policy and it kind of sets you free. Yeah. You know, if you keep up this lifestyle of like lie after lie after lie, that's when you lose credibility. That's but true. if you're just like, look, I wear my heart on my sleeve. Here's my life, which he's always done through his vlogging, now through streaming, which I hope the streaming doesn't end terribly because again, you're like pouring everything. And sometimes like privacy is needed in your life. Sometimes you do have to click off on the camera, right? Sometimes you do have to have that conversation with yourselves. Like maybe I shouldn't share this, but like, I think the reason why he's becoming one of the biggest, if not the biggest streamer right now in, in present time is because of his honesty, his transparency. And people honestly do love a good, like, you know, bounce a, back. a bounce back, yeah. you know, well, the good ones, there are out there yeah, you feel me yeah. just pray on your downfall it's they, just they impressive to see i think yeah. yeah and it's nice and i wish him the best at the end of the day it's like recognize that we are all human and we we come across you know lows of life and like as long it's all about how where you take it from there right like you can just choose to stay there and like let it all come down or you can actually pick it up and be honest and share because i think the most that people get with that honesty is that it's relatable and that's most not, not the case with these big content influencers and all these things it's like they can't relate to their lifestyles because it, it is much different but they can relate to the emotions which is nice you know i agree i agree niels and fusi if you're out there you're hearing this yeah, we sent you an email check that where can they find us, Niels? YouTube.com slash the Dima Podcast, TDP. We out. We out.